As I mentioned before to you, I've, I've been listening uh, audiobook Destiny and Power, the George H.W. Bush uh, biography by John Meacham. Um, on disc 13 now out of 20. It's a long book, but it's interesting. It takes me back to when I was in my 20s, right? Uh, he's, he's now become president and feeling the, the exuberance of being president after so many years of, of striving for it. What strikes me is back then, way back then, in the 80s, mid, you know, late 80s, you had TV, you had uh, newspapers, uh, and you had radio. That was basically your source of information. Um, in college, computer, computing was kind of taking shape and form, but I wasn't part of that uh, industry yet. But I thought, you know, when you hear from the president, it's usually by one of those three methods, and it's usually not very often. You may you, you get a State of the Union address once in a while, or you may get a, uh, uh, interviews once in a while, or you may get something in the paper once in a while, but it doesn't seem like it's that frequent. Right? We don't know the, the intimate details of what he had for breakfast and, and this and that and the other thing. You know, as compared to day to day when we have technology that is very useful, I can find out anything at an instant, what's going on in the world. And news happens instantaneously. You get an app on, the, on your phone or whatever, and you can access anything. The, the one situation that, that I kind of wonder about is the sound bites. You know, things are, are done so quickly and, and so efficiently, should I say, you know, in a tweet uh, or something that's a limited amount of information. Um, does it give us the whole picture? Not as much. I mean... Uh, as far as I know, that I'm getting limited information anyway, what goes on in politics in the world, uh, even with the, 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 the news that's coming in. I think I just get a part of it. But it just seems even, even more now. We get a little sound bites, and then we create judgments from there. What I'm getting to now is John the Baptist, you know, you wonder about this guy yelling around in the, in the wilderness. His only form of communication is by his loud voice. You know, and the transfer of information is from his loud voice to someone else's loud voice, going to someone else's loud voice, and so on and so forth. And I'm not sure, he probably had access to scripture, I'm not sure if he read much at all or not, we don't know. But how would John fare today? If John the Baptist were in our culture today, what would it look like? And man, I get Facebook requests all the time, you know, and I'm like, who are you? I've never seen you or heard of you before. What do you want from me? Scammer, you know. If we get something from John the Baptist, you know, the guy who's got his hair all roughed up and he's wearing camel skins, you know, he looks like he hadn't bathed in three weeks. Yeah, let's see, I'll pass on that one. You know, I'm not going to friend that character because he's probably asking for money for a trip somewhere or what have you, you know. Or if he sends you information I mean, we get so much information, you just kind of scan through it and go spam, 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 spam. He might have something important to say. We just don't know. We get inundated so much with information. And so we got John the Baptist who is in this mode of, of communication that, that people can understand because he speaks their language. You know? And he's telling people, basically, you, you can't rest on your laurels, right? Just because you have the name or the heritage or the ancestry.com, uh, you can't figure out that you got it made because, you know, I'm Halvor's son back in Norway. And you know what Halvor was like. You know, he was great, so obviously I'm great. And he did great things, and so I should be respected as well. And John was saying, no, you know what? That doesn't count anymore. You, you, you know, he said it's as simple as this. You know, the, the Israelites, yeah, you are children of God. You did the desert thing, and, and God chose you to, to be his people. But I'm telling you now that I can get the stone and, and create people that are sons of Abraham, or God can do this kind of thing. So don't rest on your laurels. You know, don't, don't think that you're better than you are. Because time will tell, and what you do is, is basically showing who you are. He's saying, be honest to these people who are asking, what should we do? Well, I'm not asking you to not take taxes. I'm just saying, don't take more. Don't, you know, don't gouge people. You know, and, and soldiers, 
the two, tax collectors and soldiers, they work for the government, basically. And the soldiers are asking him, well, what do you want us to do? Which I find interesting anyway. What do they care what John thinks? Anyway, they ask him, well, don't extort money. Just do your job. Be satisfied with what you get. You know, and that's like all of us. There are times when we need to ask for a raise because, you know, it's time and the work we have and the quality of work is necessary and things are looking good for the company and all that kind of thing. But he's saying, don't take advantage of people, you know. And secondly, you know, it's, you work hard. You know, you're honest, you work hard. Uh, you, you know, and put a good day's work in. Whatever it is that you do. You're working for God. You're, you're, you're giving the gifts that God has given you and you, you're distributing to the people that you know, the people you don't know. You're serving mankind, humankind, in whatever you can do. And so that is something that we're asking you to do. And that's kind of paving the way for Jesus because he's going to say the same darn thing that I'm doing right now. And he's saying just, you know, be kind and generous to people. You know, if you see that someone has a need need or want, and you've got extra, you know, it doesn't hurt to, to share, you know. Uh, there's one story of, a, of a, a poor family, and they would go, and they'd save their monies and their food stamps and, and whatever else. You remember those, what were they, back in the 70s, they had the stamps, that, the green stamps, you know. That, well, yeah, I remember mom putting those in, in the booklets, and going to Red Owl, <laughs> you know, they had Red Owl. You know, and having those booklets, you know, and every little bit help because we're all in the same boat. And she, she would get these things together. They'd go to the grocery store, and they made sure they had enough, and they would get the cheapest cereal they could find. They'd get the cheapest can of corn they could find. But the grandmother took the grandson. The grandson would go along, and then he would find out that she would take two of everything, two boxes of cornflakes, two boxes of, you know, two cans of corn, two this, two this. And he's going, what are you doing? And she says, one is for us, and another was for someone else. And then she would take half the bag. You know, she'd take them and divide them in half. And then she would go to the food pantry and drop off the bag and take the other bag home. And I said, well, well can we get this uh, cherry pie? She said, do we have enough money for two? Uh, no. Then we don't get any. And he was saying, this is really, the gospel was hitting me straight in the face. What John was saying, if you have two coats, and somebody doesn't have any, you give the other person your coat. And Grandma was doing just that. Amazing. The stories that John would tell, the, 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 the ministry that John had, paving the way for Jesus who will do much more of the same. Um, it's just a foretaste of the feast to come, right? Jesus was going to come as those who would be baptized with fire and the Holy Spirit. It would take the winnowing fork. What is a winnowing fork anyway? Who knows what a, what a winnowing fork is? You, you know, I, some of the farmers here know what that is. You know, they pick up the grain and stuff falls through, and, and you take the good stuff, you put it in the bins and the good the chaff, you just kind of <laughs> whatever with it. And so you're saying the chaff, the, the junk that's left over, you burn it, you know. Well, I imagine nowadays you could use it for fuel, and I'm sure they probably did then. Um, but John is saying, Jesus is going to come, and he's going to take what's good, oh, and he's going to embellish that. He's going to take that, and he's going to keep it. The good, the bad stuff, he's trying, going to try to, to, to uh, get rid of that stuff. You know, and, and it helps. You have repentance because you self-reflect. You think, you know what? This is not good stuff. This behavior or this kind of way of thinking or whatever needs to go. And Jesus is there to take it. And throw it, you know. As Jesus forgives our sins and wipes the slate clean, the chaff is gone. So we have John, who's not working from a soundbite. His message is complete and whole. And people who heard it heard the whole story. He wasn't a small soundbite. And he said the story, and you had to be there. Or you had to have a reliable witness to tell you exactly what he was talking about so that you could go out and see John out in the middle of nowhere. Because that's often how God works, and that's often how we see life works, too. John, the simple messenger from God, talking about the coming of the Christ to the people of God.
And that's good news for all of us. Amen.